Hi, I'm Steve Plage, and welcome to this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at CTV. And each month we highlight uh, a nonprofit in Santa Cruz County is doing wonderful, wonderful work, and we are so happy uh, this month to have with us uh, Cece Panero from the Special Parents Information Network. Cece is not only a great friend and a really good uh, person, but also the executive director of SPAN. So, Cece, welcome to Nonprofit Spotlight. Thanks, Steve. And before we get into uh, talking more about the wonderful, the great work you've done, I'm uh, checking out your website, and people should do that and really get a fuller idea of the, all the great work you do. We're going to see a short clip, and then we'll come back and we'll tell some stories. All right. Okay, my name is Ruby Vasquez. I'm a teacher on special assignment for Pajaro Valley Unified School District, and my special assignment is parent education. I've been doing this work for 14 years and um, boy when I found out about SPIN w I, we took full advantage of their um, expertise when it comes to informing parents about um, their rights um, when they have children in um, special education I particularly formed a strong collaboration with Liz Chavez and we began to offer uh, parents sessions in Spanish because we found that this was a huge um, need for Spanish-speaking parents to um, understand the whole world of uh, special education. Staff has been so supportive of our efforts. Um, th their passion is very evident in the work that they do. My name is Elizabeth Chavez and I'm one of the parent support and training coordinators for SPIN and I also facilitate our Spanish-speaking support groups. And SPIN is just a great organization to work with because we do help a population that needs a lot of support and you know they're going through a lot, a lot of struggles, so they need all the support that they can get. And that's what SPIN does. SPIN is a nonprofit that serves families who have children with special needs. And we're a parent resource center and we support the families in any possible way that we can't. Um, it can be that they're looking for a service or if their child's having issues with the school getting services or just emotional support that the parents need themselves because they're having a difficult situation. Um, so anything that the parents need, we're here for them. Even if parents are not struggling with an issue and just need somebody to listen to them, I think that they can they need to know that they can just call us because we're always listening with the heart, you know, just trying to support them and make their lives a little bit easier because it's already stressful enough as it is. My name is Carrie Edelstein and I'm a teacher for Pajaro Valley Unified School District. I work with kids who are in home and hospital and SPIN is really important to any family and child who has special needs as it helps them get support and understand their rights. And that just gives us a glimpse of the great work that uh, SPIN does as supporting families who have children with special needs. Cece, uh, people in Santa Cruz know you from your work in the LBG community, of course. Uh, uh, your very lively run for city council not too long ago. But tell us about uh, how you got involved with SPIN and how this became a real passion for you. Right, and don't forget my term on the school board. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. I almost forgot that. Right. You know, we've done many, many wonderful things. But tell exactly. us about SPIN. Well, um, you know, speaking of the school board, that was part of the catalyst. Well, I was one of those people that was born in Santa Cruz, raised in Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. My dad actually went to Santa Cruz High School. Oh, my God. I went to Santa Cruz High School. Mm -hmm. My daughter went to Santa Cruz High School. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up working for the school district for 15 years, and I did every job from, uh, you know, classified union president, uh, food service, mm -hmm. uh, assistant principal, summer school, career development specialist, lots of work in special ed. I held a lot of different positions mm -hmm. in that 15 years. And then um, having that information, and also let me backtrack a little bit. My dad sure. was the custodian for Mission Hill Middle School for oh, 27 right? years. So having been a student, having had my dad work mm -hmm. there, worked at all those things, yeah. and then I ran, then I decided to run for school board mm -hmm. because, you know, there we go. My dad was a custodian. 
if I'm on the school board, there you go, in one generation, then we've My goodness. gone yeah. to the top, right? So what that gave me was, you know, an educated opinion and a full rounded idea of what was happening in public schools from mm -hmm. being a student to working there to having a kid that went there. I got to see it from every single perspective. Then when I got on the school board, I could see it from that other perspective, also that union president thing. So I held every single hat right. and sat in every single seat. Yeah. And then I, then I can have an opinion about something. Of or course, I felt like, yeah. you know, having that perspective, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, here's the issue. Here's the big right. thing. Well, um, since Prop 13, California schools have gone downhill. Mm. We used to be the top in education yeah. spending. We used to be the top five in our graduates and and young people moving on to be global leaders, et cetera. Right. Sure. We to the bottom five. And that was Prop 13 that um, changed that mm. in our spending. And so what happened is that uh, we have not been adequately educating our students and everybody, including school board members and teachers and parents and everybody, seems to, to lend the blame to those families with kids with special needs. And they're saying yeah. that the special education mm -hmm. is the reason for the, encro reason for the encroachment on the general fund. And hmm. that's why California schools are bankrupt and don't have enough money and they want to blame those people who, you know, yeah. are the most And of course helpless. that's not now nor has it ever been the case. Right, well, uh, uh, always special education has been an unfunded mandate by the federal government. Mm -hmm. So since the Ford administration, the Ford administration um, uh, implemented that you have to educate special needs kids in a certain way and you're required to do it. Mm -hmm. And since then, they underfunded it 60%. Hmm. So you're going to compound that on top of, so you have unfunded mandates. It's like there's lots of unfunded mandates, yeah. but this is one that's affected young people, kids, parents, and schools. Sure. And so that, you know, ball rolling of unfunded mandates, people want to blame special ed. And so when I saw all those components all put together mm -hmm. and see the pie all put together. From I your go, insider's view of yeah. being in on the school right. board, right? Right, from the insider's view of the yeah. school board and yeah. all the other parts that I, that I could bring to that table, I saw that the, the answer to all of California's public education woes is to serve those families with special needs. Mm -hmm. So therefore, <clears throat> they're getting their needs met. They don't have to sue a school. Their kid doesn't have to sit right. in limbo. Mm -hmm. They're getting their needs met, and the kid, all the kids are being educated. And I just find it, you know, certainly unconscionable that people were blaming those right. students who needed the help the most mm -hmm. yeah. for the problems mm -hmm. instead of taking personal responsibility. Because, you know, we can blame the bad word feds all we want right. for this sure. problem, but until we actually take an action and do yeah. something about it, right. you know, it's, it's all of our fault. I mean, I yeah. l used to like to go around and, and ask everybody in the audience, were, were any of you not a child? Anybody <laughs> here that was not a child, this is not your issue. If you were a child, then this is your issue. Any of us here are still issue. children, yes. Yes, there you go, this is double your issue. That's why, yeah, me and Steve, it's double yeah, our issue. Absolutely, issues, right. still kids, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is our issue. Everybody mm -hmm. was a child once, and, mm -hmm. and that children don't vote, right. that's why mm -hmm. it's been, it's hard for these underrepresented yeah. voices to be heard. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, the answer is serving the families with special needs, and then I actually got to go and implement this. And I've been here for over 11 and a half years yeah. and working hard at trying to serve mm -hmm. these families. So then in turn, all families yeah. are served. And it's wonderful because I think, you know, you and I uh, both believe that all politics are local and certainly all solutions are local. And you really have to get into your community and engage with to be able to kind of confront challenging problems like this. Was there any organization like SPIN in Santa Cruz County before, well, I saw 1985 on the website, but was there anything that existed before that? Well. Um, no, not in Santa Cruz County. Yeah. I mean, the group of parents that got together, mostly all women that got together mm -hmm. and gathered together, they went over the hill. They would have to go over the hill to Parents Helping Parents, which is in Santa Clara, okay. in order to, you know, get their services and get their needs met. And they're mm -hmm. like, this is too far. We can't be driving that hill. It's yeah. awful. Right. Of course. You know, and so we, they wanted to bring something here and start it here. So do you have a collaborative relationship with the folks in Santa Clara County in terms of uh, uh, not pooling resources, but certainly, you know, learning from one another and, and being collegial about, you know, the oh, service you're providing? Absolutely. Yeah. There, and, and our uh, agency was modeled after that. Oh, okay. So we were modeled after them. We, right. you know, got lots of leadership from them yeah. on how to do it and how to 
start right. supporting this well, community. Well, tell us uh, a little bit and tell the viewers, of course, uh, a little bit about the agency itself. I know you have uh, like three offices and you have staff, certainly, uh, but tell us a little bit about the structure of the organization itself. Well, we're also beside. We're also a family empowerment center on disabilities, okay. and that's like sort of that's that's our like major funding, mm -hmm. um, which is a federal pass-through grant. So it comes from the feds. It was a legislation, the Senate Bill 511, mm -hmm. that stated that families in California needed to have a disability center to go to, to talk to, to help them get their right, services, of and yeah. you know, so that happened. And and you know, that's of course talk about unfunded mandates again. Yeah. So the Senate bill happened in 2000 or something or yeah around 2000 maybe i don't now i don't remember but mm -hmm. you guys can look it up sure All right. we will look you look, look that it up, up and, and we'll mean. figure out what the, what the dates yeah. are on mm -hmm. that and um when i started doing this there were um 12 of these agencies in the state of california mm -hmm. so there's 12 family empowerment centers mm -hmm. on disabilities and <laughs> the parents helping parents over the hill was one of them right so we collaborate with yeah. them a lot and the other mm -hmm. 12 and then since then, we've got two more opened in the state. So now there's 14. Wow. But that's a long distance run because yeah. the Senate bill says there's supposed to be 32. Mm. So there's supposed to be 32 centers in the state of California in mm -hmm. order for all those families to be served in order to achieve that goal that we're trying to achieve, right. which is families getting their needs met so then it will mm -hmm. help all kids, right? Yeah. You know. And it's interesting to me that there's such a disconnect between people understand that there are children with special needs, but they often forget that there are parents of those children right. who also need some support, you know, some right. you know, guidance in, in, in how they can better you know, help their children along on this, you know, this path of education and thriving and whatnot. Right, right, right. Exactly. And that's a good point. And that's exactly what we do. And, and that's where, you know, and that's where the funders fall short, too, because mm -hmm. they say to me, well, Cece, where's the wheelchair? You're buying a kid. And I go, we serve their parents. Right. We serve the parents yeah. who have the kids with disabilities mm -hmm. and we help them navigate the school system, navigate the medical system. Right. Uh, the, every kid has to have an individualized education plan mm -hmm. that goes to public school that mm -hmm. has a disability. And it's a very complicated system with its own language right. that you know, especially if you're a second language learner, if English mm -hmm. is your second language, the process is really cumbersome and there's a right. lot of people that don't know their rights. And mm -hmm. so back to our offices. So we have our main Please. office yeah. is in Watsonville. In Watsonville. And we're yeah. there on purpose. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have that number up so people, uh, if they want to do, we tell people how they can help out if they like. But there's a number, you know, that they can call and find yes. out more about that. Sure. And before you tell us any more, let me get... Uh, make sure people you look at the spinsc.org website you get all this great information but there are several ways you can help out the wonderful work they're doing you can donate you can volunteer you can be a mentor parent uh, be a corporate sponsor or you can ask your employer to make a matching grant these are some of the ways in which you kind of keep this great work going but tell us in the you know your, your office is in Watsonville so is that like your main that's center our of main operation? office yeah. where we have our you know myself and another full-time employee that's mm -hmm. there all the time we're we're getting ready to get a few more new grants. We'll be able to hire some more people, Excellent. which we're really excited yeah. about, and we'll be able to expand to serve the zero to three population. So mm. our main grant, we serve three to 22. Okay. And we serve everybody, though. It's like people call us, and we don't ask their age mm -hmm. or if they're a citizen or anything. We just, mm -hmm. whoever calls us, right. we help them. And, we, and, and, and it doesn't matter their age or or ethnicity or anything about yeah. them. I mean, are some of the grants that you apply for, are they age targeted? Are they uh, disability specific? You know, are there any things you have to look at and say, well, we need more money for zero to three. We need more money from three to 12 or something. Right, right. Well, you know, the great thing is that, that the, you know, I don't know, the system or society or whatever is really uh, seen that there's a better that early intervention is a real oh thing, absolutely of course right? yeah and we've been doing a absolutely. thing absolutely where we've we've partnered with the watsonville hospital for right. ever since i've been here for yeah. over 11 years mm -hmm. and when the baby's born with a disability in that yeah. hospital they call me yeah. and we send a parent to the hospital that speaks the language mm -hmm. and then a parent who has a kid with the same disability and early intervention you can't yeah. doesn't get earlier than that yeah. And we've been doing that for a long time with as 
you know, unfunded, just on the wing and a prayer half mm -hmm. the time. That's what we do, right? And it's interesting because uh, not too long ago we did a show here about dientes, and they said the first birthday, first tooth, and uh, they've had uh, the uh, first five folks were here talking about how important it is. You know, that that kind of you want to get uh, you know this kind of thing and program is working as soon as you possibly can. Exactly. Well, speaking of dientes, you know, we have a connection to them too. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. So our original founders, our original founders of Spin, Mary and Jay. Balzer, Jay Balzer started Dientes. Oh, I didn't know and that. And then they had a kid with special needs, and then they mm -hmm. were th the original founding yeah. board members and right. founders of uh, Spin. So now, is the state, uh, this is an unfunded mandate, the state is assuming some responsibility in creating some funding for this and opening more than the, the 12 or 14 centers you're talking about? Is there 34? Is, is well, 32 is what for? we're hoping 32? for. 32? But, but yeah, but it's a Fed, it's a federal, it's, yeah. a, it's a federal pass-through grant and the feds, hmm. you know, have not seen it clear to be able to, uh, yeah. you know, release any more yeah. monies for the last few years for sure. I mean obviously. you have a great uh, worldview. You and I know one another uh, pretty well and have talked about any number of things but uh, do you think that uh, with the Trump administration uh, just uh, for a moment are they going to be making it more difficult to get special needs grants oh, and absolutely. money? Absolutely. They're yeah. going to totally make it more difficult yeah. and, and, and it's not it yeah and it is the administration. Mm -hmm. It's the administration. It's not one single person. The only right. one single person that is you know um, not our friend, mm -hmm. to say it nicely, is the Department of Education person, Betsy DeVos. Hmm, interesting. She's not a friend of special education. Really? And um, we, are, we are really mm -hmm. hoping that she makes a turn, but we're not holding our breath. We just mm -hmm. had an in-service about that right. the other day, mm -hmm. and um, we all need to call our senators yeah. and our Congress people. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, this whole program of hers that now it's, it's really a voucher program, but she, but now mm. they're trying to call it parent choice, which is another bad word. Right. And um, that is a you know it it's a misrepresentation of what it really is, because mm. really what they're going to do is have the poor kids and the special ed kids mm -hmm. it will all that be left in public mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. Everybody else will have a choice. But if but these voucher programs that she's trying to right. implement do not fully fund any of the private. Or yeah. not our charter or non -pu non public schools. Yeah. So if you don't have the extra money to come out of your pocket right. to pay for that, you right. don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, we're we're really um, mm -hmm. uh, we're not we're not afraid. We're ready to fight. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Well, you're a fighter. And I know that. We're going to fight yeah. it every way. Yeah. And and in the meantime, mm -hmm. we've been you know writing other grants and getting other grants mm -hmm. to keep us uh, alive. If you know if Betsy decides to. Um, eliminate that sh we will still go on yeah. and we will keep fighting the good fight mm -hmm. and we'll keep doing what we do no matter yeah. what the feds do and to it, us. Yeah. So. And of course as I was saying this uh, show this program is evergreen so we'll be showing it uh, many times o o you know over you know extended periods of time so people will be able to learn more about this great work but uh, if a parent watching this show at some point uh, and and has a, ch a special needs child how do they get into your program you know, what, what's the process yeah. for you as a special parent especially as parent is saying gosh you know I could use some help and here's spin how do they connect what's the process what's the orientation how does that yeah, work yeah well certainly call our office if you yeah. are if your child goes to a South Santa Cruz County school mm -hmm. then you call our Watsonville office right. and hopefully that number will be up on the screen yeah. That's the there it is there it is 722-2800 look at that yes that's go. it uh -huh. and then um, if you uh, if you go to a North County school, you'll call our Santa Cruz office, which is the four two three seven seven one three phone number. Good. And um, also, if you're if you're so if you're in your San Benito County, we have a Hollister office, yeah. and you can call that number yeah. as well. Which you probably just call our Watsonville office, and we'll direct right. you to that to that number. Yeah. And of course, all those numbers are appearing on the website, which again yes. is spinsc.org. Yes. Great, terrific website. I mean, it really it lays out so much information for people who are in need of these services. Yeah. 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 And another thing that makes us unique is we have a hundred percent. Uh, parents of kids with disabilities on our board of directors and oh. we've worked a long time to make that happen so every oh. so the ship is steered yeah. in that direction by these yeah. families you find that that kind of uh, uh, peer driven uh, model is is, uh, is really beneficial for the organization just to yeah get yeah yeah well and that's part of that that SB 511 that was written by parents you know that the the luckily with the America with Disabilities Act really um, 
gave an empowerment to people with disabilities mm -hmm. and then parents of kids with disabilities yeah. to make these things happen. And it's written there in law that yeah. you got to have at least 51 percent of parents with kids with disabilities. Yeah. And I'm like, let's make it all. Yeah, and I think know. that's fascinating uh, to me because, as you know, I'm chairman of the board of MHCAN, the Mental Health Client Action Network, and mm -hmm. we have a, a requirement in our bylaws that we have to be two-thirds composition uh, peers. And they are they're peer operated, peer run, peer supported. And that model is something that I had not really been uh, very familiar with until I became the chair over mm -hmm. there. And it's really wonderful to see people so engaged on things that they have control over. That they are yeah, really making yeah. their lives and their children's lives better by their own efforts and by being engaged with that. I think yeah. it's a wonderful thing. It is. Well, yeah. there you go. That's empowerment. That's like, and that's who we are, the Family Empowerment Center. It's not mm -hmm. just a resource center, but an empowerment center. So now, how does it, uh, one of these things that, uh, the, that we can do to really help this great work is, is be a, a mentor parent. How does that work? Well, um, yes, so if you're a parent of a kid with a disability and you've gone through the school process or you've g gone through some different uh, emotional or spiritual experiences that you're ready to share with other families mm -hmm. and other parents and call us up and we'll have a little training and then you will talk to another parent that is just going through that same process that you're going through. So you can mentor them through that, that process that you've already been through, which is, again, the peer-to-peer -peer, yeah. you know, engagement. Well, that's wonderful. Now, now, what kinds of, uh, you notice also on the website there are support groups. There, there are so many different resources, and, and you can look up, it says, you know, local resources, okay. web resources, you got all these support groups. That's all on the website. Again, I can't emphasize that enough. Yeah. There's so much great information. But how about uh, the support groups themselves? Yeah, well, we're going to be starting a bunch of new support groups for the zero to three population, because mm -hmm. um, specifically for the young ones, so the parents can bring their babies and and um, they'll have that early intervention and early support because mm -hmm. that's based on these early um, early grants that we're going to get. Yeah. So, so now, are you uh, are you doing any uh, lobbying work outside of your work as executive director to try to push our state legislators to funnel some more money into this, or, or at least to try to get them to uh, impact the federal government? Say, listen, we need to be able to get some money into our local. You know, programs. Well, I always try and do what I can do, right? Yeah, and, I know. You, have, that, yeah. That's your personality. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. right, exactly. We can't do anything about exactly. that. That's the way you just, are. It's just how it is. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Whatever mm -hmm. project I'm taking mm -hmm. on, for sure, we try and advocate and lobby. We have some really good, I mean, you know, Assemblyman Mark Stone has been a great friend of SPIN. Mm -hmm. He's been to every single one of our fundraisers. Oh, we is have that a, right? We have an yeah. annual fundraiser since I started doing this. I met him when I was running mm -hmm. for school board. Yeah. He was on the county board of supervisors. And yeah. He's been a really great friend of SPIN, mm -hmm. and so we have a few people like that. You know, it's like people were like, well, how do you, yeah. how do you know, how do you get assemblymen or senators yeah. or whatever to, to work or advocate for what you do? And I go, yeah. well, they were my friends before they ever became those exactly. things, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting. Uh, I'm proud to say that I'm a member of the advisory uh, board for SPIN, and, and uh, right. been to a couple of that. Went to went your last retreat, and went to one of the fundraisers last year. Just the people there and the feeling, you know, of how committed and passionate they are about this. You know, it tells me a lot about not only the importance of the work, but the fact that I think that it will thrive and not only survive but thrive as we move into the future. Right, which is a good point about bringing up our advisory board. We have an advisory board of about eight, nine people now, and Steve is our representative for the mental health community mm -hmm. because we serve all disabilities, mental right. disabilities, physical disabilities, mm -hmm. you know, all uh, uh, emotional disabilities, mm -hmm. uh, developmental disabilities, right. whatever it is, you know, ADD, learning disabilities, mm -hmm. anything that you can name it, or, yeah. um, you know, or people that feel disabled that maybe yeah. don't even have a diagnosis yet. And that's the interesting part. Uh, I'm sure that there are parents out there who are struggling with trying to determine exactly what it is that's preventing their child from developing as may quickly as maybe to scale might be or what they would like, if it's ADD or something that's, uh, that's undiagnosed. Uh, what, what, what advice would you give them if they have a question about uh, maybe the developmental capabilities of, of the right. child? Right. Well, certainly give us a call and we will yeah. help you write a request for an assessment to ah, your school okay. district. So All that's right. the first step is write a request for assessment okay. and get that kid assessed, yeah. th assessed through the schools. You mm -hmm. can always have them assessed yourself, but the school needs to pay for that assessment and do that assessment right. for your kid when you request it within a certain amount of time. Okay. Because I like to think that uh, when we do these shows and, and when we broadcast them several different times so as many people in Santa Cruz County can know and understand and be aware of the great work you do, that we're really kind of connecting people. 
You yeah. know, we're connecting people to the great work that you do, and it does. It's never really done in a vacuum. You know, it's all how I engage you engage locally, and we're very fortunate to have have Spin do that. Um, in terms of the program moving into the future, how do you see uh, your organization, your executive director? You've been there 11 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll get you for 11 more. You know, <laughs> <laughs> because you do such great work and uh, you are such a great person, so great, uh, committed as a community member. W what do you see in the future happening with? Well, Spanish? this whole expansion to the early intervention yeah. and the early start. So we're going to do early. We are getting early start grants. We are. You know, going to be doing the special connections family at family resource center. So mm -hmm. we'll have a we will not just be an empowerment center. We'll be a resource center for the early start family. So mm -hmm. anybody zero to three, we have we'll have more staff and we'll have more funding. Right. So we'll be able to really serve people better. Even though we've been doing it, but we've been you right. know just not right. having a lot of staff to be able to right. do all this work in two counties. But that'll take place in Watsonville. You have the physical capacity there to yeah. do some work yeah. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we do. We have we have that extra desk already there. We just gotta buy the computers <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And get the people hired yeah. and get them trained mm -hmm. and then we'll you know we'll hopefully yeah. we'll get some space from the county office of ed yeah. to hold our support groups, which that has happened in the past when we're hoping that that's gonna happen in the future. Yeah. And um, yeah, so the expansion will really be for the early early start, and that early intervention really can mean the difference yeah. for everybody. And once again, uh, when you're talking about uh, computers or staff, or the need really for all nonprofits in the world to be funded, you know, sufficiently so they can do their work, uh, please go to the spinsc.org website. You know, you can donate, you can volunteer, you can be a mentor parent, as we mentioned, be a corporate sponsor. Any of you corporate sponsors out there yeah. would like to give us a few dollars? That would be helpful. Or ask your employer to make a, a matching grant. You can find out all this information there on SPIN. Uh, so, you know, we're winding down sort of the end of our time here, but uh, give us kind of an overview of what you hope people will take away from this show in terms of the work that you're doing with SPIN and, this, and the work that SPIN's doing for parents with special needs kids. Well, I guess, first of all, we're all in this together. Yeah. And every single person well on the planet was a child once, and yeah. every single person, if you're lucky, if you're really, really lucky, you're going to become a disabled person because you will be a senior citizen and you mm -hmm. will get old, mm -hmm. and that that's a disabling factor. So this is all of our fact, all of our issue, you know. Yeah. So we are all in this together, first of all, you know, and that that um, you know, please support us and help yeah. us and spread the word and, and any families that are in need. Mm -hmm. We do we do two annual things. Well, we do three annual things. Uh, one is our quiz night, which is our North County fundraiser. Mm -hmm. That is like a hundred dollar plate dinner and. And uh, we honor a family every year, and that's our annual event where we do fun our one big fundraiser. That's what puts us, why we're unlike other yeah. nonprofits. We only do one big fundraiser a year. And then we do a, a Spanish only conference, which is free for all the families mm -hmm. in Watsonville um, at, at the beginning, usually the end of January okay. on a weekend. And it's a big free yeah. conference with all kinds of workshops, all kinds of trainings, all kinds of information for a full day for them yeah. uh, in Spanish only. Well, it's a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, as long as I've known you, uh, uh, you've been a great community person. You've been a great person to work uh, with the community and engage with it and make it a better place for all of us, and particularly for parents uh, with special needs. So thank you, Cece, for mm -hmm. being here, and thank you for being the great person that you are and a great friend. So thank we appreciate you, it. Thank uh, you. Thanks for watching the Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, we'll see you in another, next month. We do another great show on another great community nonprofit doing some wonderful, wonderful work. So until then, I'm Steve Plage, and I'll see you next time.